The trial of Workers' Party Chief Pritam Singh resumed on Friday, with intense cross-examination of Ms. Lo Pei Ying, former secretarial assistant to ex-WP Member of Parliament Rosa Khan. Singh faces two charges related to allegations that he lied to the Committee of Privileges, investigating the controversy surrounding Khan's and truthful statements made in Parliament in 2021. The charges stem from an incident on 3rd August 2021, when Khan claimed she had accompanied a sexual assault victim to a police station, alleging mishandling by the police. This account, delivered during a parliamentary speech on issues of sexual violence, was later revealed to be false. Khan publicly admitted to the lie on 1 November 2021. Central to Singh's trial is whether he advised Khan to continue the lie or encouraged her to come clean earlier. During the trial, defence lawyer Mr Andre Jumaboy, representing Singh, zeroed in on a series of WhatsApp messages exchanged between Lo, Khan and WP member Mr Yudhishthra Nathan in the days following Khan's parliamentary falsehood. A message from Lo to Khan on 7 October 2021 was brought up during cross-examination, where Lo suggested to Khan, since you're not in contact with the victim anymore, maybe don't give the police any details about the story. When asked by Mr. Jumaboy if this message was effectively encouraging Khan to perpetuate the falsehood, Lo denied such an intent. I believe I've already given my answer yesterday, she replied, before clarifying, I don't think so. However, the defence pressed on, asking if she was in effect, advising Khan not to disclose the truth. You might want to gather some cases of people who shared their stories with you and present that instead. Lo had texted Khan. Mr Jumaboy argued that these messages indicated Lo was suggesting an alternative way to justify Khan's original statement in Parliament. Does this message suggest that you were advising Ms Khan to reveal the truth or perpetuate the falsehood? he asked. Lo responded, not these two specific messages. Jumaboy also highlighted a discrepancy between the emotional state Lo claimed to have felt and the tone of her messages. During a committee of privileges hearing, Lo had testified that she felt shock and fear when Khan reiterated the falsehood in Parliament on 4 October 2021, after being questioned by Law and Home Affairs Minister K. Shanmugam. However, when confronted with a message she had sent to Khan the following day, 5th October, which included, LOL, the defence questioned whether her expressed emotions were genuine. If it's true that you felt shock and fear, why did you write that? Mr Jumaboy asked, referring to the casual tone of the message. Lowe explained, humans are capable of having more than one emotion at a time. We were all feeling very stressed and it's not uncommon for the three of us in stressful situations to make the situation more bearable. After being repeatedly pressed by the defence, she eventually conceded that the message did not fully reflect the fear she had described during the COP hearing. A major point of contention in Lowe's testimony was her decision to redact parts of a message from Mr Nathan when submitting evidence to the COP. The unredacted portion of the message, sent on 7 October 2021, Read. In the first place, I think we should just not give too many details. At most, apologize for not having the facts about her age accurate. Lowe admitted to redacting this part of the message, but defended her action by saying it was unrelated to the investigation. Mr. Jumaboy accused her of being manipulative in choosing to conceal certain parts of the evidence. Initially, Lowe disagreed with this characterization, but eventually conceded under sustained questioning. It is manipulative, she admitted, though she maintained that her intention was not to hide incriminating details, but to protect what she deemed irrelevant to the committee's inquiry. The defence also pushed the idea that it was Lowe who encouraged Khan to continue operating in what she described as a grey area. Mr Jumaboy suggested that Lowe's guidance to Khan was neither clearly legal nor clearly illegal and that she advised Khan to obscure the truth in her dealings with Parliament and the COP. You told us it was above your pay grade to advise Ms Khan, but the suggestion to operate in what you termed the grey area, it's from you, isn't it? He asked. Lowe disagreed with the assertion. I think several people, including party leaders, were likewise thinking in a similar vein, she said.
However, Jumaboy pressed her further, stating, There's no gray area when it comes to Risa Khan's lie. It's either tell the truth or don't. There's nothing gray about that. Lo replied, To me, there is. She elaborated that while Khan's claim about accompanying the victim was false, she believed the latter part of her parliamentary account, which involved a victim's experience, was true. Another significant point during the trial was whether Singh had unequivocally directed Khan to come clean about her lie, or whether there had been ambiguity in his instructions. Lo confirmed that by 12 October 2021, Singh, she, and Nathan had reached a consensus that Khan should eventually admit the truth. However, the defense suggested that Lo and Nathan were still exploring ways to avoid full disclosure. Mr. Jumaboy referred to a meeting on 12 October 2021, where Singh reportedly told the group, don't even suggest covering this up with another lie. Lo acknowledged Singh's firm stance, but insisted that she had also been leaning towards truthfulness, though with reservations. When asked to quantify her commitment to honesty, she replied, I wouldn't say it was 100%, but I was very close to it. Singh's legal team emphasized that Singh had always been in favor of telling the truth, with Mr. Jumaboy asserting, at this meeting, or at least when the meeting started, the only one who thought that the truth should come out was Pratam Singh. Lo replied, no, I thought it too, although she admitted that her certainty was around 90%. Another notable line of questioning focused on the potential consequences for the Workers' Party if Khan's lie was exposed. Lo acknowledged that she and Nathan had been concerned about the potential fallout for the party. His position was that revealing the truth to Parliament and Singapore would be extremely damaging, she said of Nathan. However, she stopped short of admitting that she had actively encouraged Khan to perpetuate the lie for the party's sake. Lo also confirmed that she had once suggested that Khan resign as MP before the truth came out, as she believed it might help mitigate damage to both Khan and the party. I was laying out an option, she said, though she added that it would have been irresponsible for Khan to resign without first coming clean.